Hi there, thank you for joining me. This video is again not planned. It was a lovely autumn Sunday morning on a flat calm day, so I decided to pop the drone up as we watched this ship, the Shetland Trader, coming to port. Closely followed by one of the Yellow Perils, a service catamaran for the nearby offshore wind farm. So this vlog is now all about the port of Workington. Located at the mouth of the River Derwent and strategically placed at the lower marine of the Solway Firth estuary, to use a technical term, Workington Port has existed in some form since the Roman times, when it was believed to have been the fort known as Magis. I hope I've pronounced that correct. Though there is still some debate about all this. Now then, like many industrial ports, the site itself is not exactly photogenic. However, it does overlook the southern hills of Dumfries and Galloway in Scotland, which you can see in the distance, and on clear days like today, the Lakeland Fells are visible in the opposite direction, being only a few miles away. The name itself, Workington, is believed to derive from an Anglo-Saxon period, where a man known as Works W-O-E-R-C-S, who settled there with his followers, who referred to themselves as Worsingers, or Worse's people. Anyway, they resided in Waringa, Tun, uh, Tun being a town or settlement in Anglo-Saxon. So there you go. Throughout its history, Workington has had many notable events, including where Mary Queen of Scots landed prior to her captivity and eventually obviously her uh, trial and uh, execution. But it really took off as a commercial port in the 1700s, shipping coal from the local mines over to Ireland, which itself is not that far away. Later, catapulting itself to fame on a global stage. Later, catapulting to fame on a global stage as Henry Bessemer first installed his revolutionary steel-making process in the town, the location of which still exists today, albeit is now used for something else. So the port continued to expand right into the 20th century. So important was the steel it produced and exported. It had been for almost a couple of hundred years an extremely busy port. And it would be no exaggeration to state that Workington Port played a significant part in helping Britain gain its place on the world stage and developing global prosperity and connectivity for millions. The rails for train tracks it produced were rated as the best there was and were shipped all over the world as rail connections were made everywhere. Its rails literally changed the economy and prosperity of many nations and it circled the world. Though you wouldn't think so today. In fact the complete history of all this could be an entire video of itself. Sadly, towards the end of the last century, unable to produce the, now, the new longer rails that modern uh, fast trains needed, its days as a steel town were numbered, and the port itself went into some decline. It's still very much in use today, as you can see, but it may be a shadow of its former self, but it's still an essential hub for numerous local industries, and used by small leisure sailing and fishing boats. Commercially, weekly visits from ships such as the Shetland Trader, seen here, a Barbados registered ship, bring in timber for the nearby Iggerson Paper and Board Mill. Also, currently in port, the Arklo Glen, a regular visitor, and she's just dispensed her cargo of concrete for the nearby Armstrong's Concrete Products, 
who currently cast their products, off stairs and risers for the building trade, in the aforementioned Old Bessemer building. Now the Glen is due to leave soon, and as we film, she's battening down her hatches. Steel still has a toehold in the town, though the name and owners keep changing, but at the time of this video it's trading as TSP Engineering and it's very close by. And then currently run as a trust by the local council, the port's future is at least secure for the time being. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Anyway, thank you for watching, hope you found this interesting.